Good morning, um, my people. Um, last week we talked a little bit about um, the coronavirus. Um, I remember we spoke about three days ago where it was about uh, 11,900 cases, I think. If I, can, if I can remember, that's what I told you. And as of this morning, March 23rd, 2020, it's, it's more than 26,000 cases in USA only, and even, uh, more than 285,000 people dead. And when they say 26,000, these are the people that get the test and they tested positive. So we have more people that living with the virus that haven't get the test done yet. So if we take all these people together, we have at least 40 to 50,000 people that are working with a positive with that disease in them that, um, we have, that they don't know. We have an extra 40, uh, 25,000, I, I, I can say, that are working around that don't know if they have it because they haven't uh, developed any symptoms. So this morning we're going to get into the Bible a little bit and um to so see god promises uh for time of trouble so i'm gonna read a verse where uh, most of the whole world is familiar with all of all of you know that verse it's john 3 16 that says um for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life so if you if you take that verse today you might say well <laughs> that verse uh, there's there's not really um, make any sense anymore because if uh, a loving God why does a loving God let uh, such those things things happening right now in the world why does a loving God let um, such a, a virus uh, killing so many people making so many people sick uh, uh, making so much uh, terror in the world where people cannot go to work people can't really afford what they have to uh, people cannot pay their bills because they, they don't have work to go to and and really we have a government that um that is slow to act and um people are so angry at each other and even at god and um this morning i remember um I was talking with my girl and she told me that she was afraid and because she could not go to work and she was afraid for me also I was like well you know what baby um it's okay because I know God is in control of that situation if something ha has to happen to me or you it's gonna happen regardless no matter what we've done so what we have to do like I told her this is this morning what help what we have to do in this moment in time is that we have to practice common sense we have to follow all the guidelines social distancing wash your hands you know and when you're sneezing sneezing your elbow instead of your hands if you see somebody sneezing and coughing you know you you get out of there you know don't stay near that person if you sick don't go to work and i was telling her also this is uh, the strategy of the devil the devil knows uh, the word of God. He was in heaven. He lives in he lives in heaven like I told her So the devil know what in heaven the devil knows that hell is real heaven is real And he knows heaven is a wonderful place. He knows a lot of wonderful things up there that he's, he's missing and the devil know also he has no chance of repentance He's on he's on a one-way ticket to hell so the devil cannot purchase another another return ticket uh, to salvation he's uh, he's He's flying a one-way ticket to hell, and he knows what hell is. He knows that hell is a terrible place. Hell will never stop. So he knows he knows what eternal life is. He knows eternal life is a wonderful uh, experience where it's gonna be wonderful, beyond wonderful every, every day where we all the saints are gonna be living, worshiping God daily. Like I told her, I was like, you know, the devil try to make people angry at each other, angry at God. So we can say, there's no God. This is not a God. This is not such a loving God. Should not let uh, such and such thing happen to us. 
and I was like, you know what we need to do this time, this time right now, is for us to stay on our knees in prayer, to let God in control of that situation. Because I know, like I told her, there's no cure for these medications. There's no cure, excuse me, there's no cure for this um, virus. There's no vaccine. There's no therapeutic drugs or anything. So even, if, even if you hear in the media or the president uh, talking about there's a drug, there's a combination of drugs. I want to warn you right now, don't take those two drugs together because drug side effects only can kill you and can cause a lot of more, a lot more damage than helping you. So, first thing we need to do right now is to use our common sense, you know, social distancing, wash your hands, and let God be in control in the first place. Let God be in control of that situation because without God, believe me, doesn't matter who's who's talking, doesn't matter who's taking action, doesn't matter who's speaking, doesn't matter who's the expert is, Dr. Fachi or or whoever, does not matter. If God is not in control of the situation, we in trouble. So I told her that God is still in control. God is in the control of that situation. We don't have to fear. If we have to die, even if we die in that situation, does not mean that we lose the battle. We might, we might, we might not hear, we might not be here in present on this earth. But as a Christian, as a believer, our soul, we we be in heaven with God. We have hope of everlasting life. And the devil does not want to hear that. He does not want to hear men, me, you, whoever, as a human being, talking about hope of everlasting life. He knows what that is. He knows this is a wonderful experience. He does not want me and you to have that chance of living in heaven with God everlastingly. He wants us to be with him in hell, in that terrible place to burn forever. So that's why he's, um, he's creating all kinds of things, viruses, um, he's getting all, all kind of troubles to make men angry at each other, angry at God. And um, I told her, did you know, viruses, uh, sickness, all those things, they, they came from sin. And sin originated from, from the devil because the first sin was disobedience. Where the devil came to the garden and tempted Adam and Eve and he, he made he convinced him that the fruit was wonderful and then he made her eat it and then she as a as a woman that you know when you have a woman you understand that, that you love that woman you know that's there's nothing a woman can make a man want a man to do sometimes that men would she would not be successful because if you love that woman believe me she can make a lot of things happen so uh to my understanding adam was in love with that woman so that's how he ate that fruit and then there came sin in, in the world, there came sickness, there came death, and um, there came disaster in the whole world. But that doesn't mean that God is not in control of the whole world. If we can go back to the verse I just read, John 3.16, that's when God came on earth as Jesus, a baby, he grew up to, to be... Uh, as a 33 year old, he died on the cross for us, he gave his life. He had victory over sin, over death, over sickness. So that doesn't mean we're not gonna sick, we're not gonna get sick, we're not gonna die until his return. But he has the victory, he has keys of death and hell in his hand. But those things still gonna happen until the end, until he come back, until he, he changed the devil, put him in hell where he, where he belongs, where he can run forever. So, the devil does not like this verse, John 3.16. That's where God took that victory again over him. The devil was winning. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, when he made Adam and Eve ate that food, oh my God, he was winning. He was winning. He was winning. And God was looking for a way to bring salvation to us. He was looking for a way for us to save us. And that's when Jesus himself, Jesus, Jesus volunteered himself. He told the Father, yes, I'm willing to drink that cup. I'm willing to come down on this earth to become a man, to grow up as a baby, 
to feel pain like I feel, to be able to so to be able to, to get sick, to be able to to die, to be able to feel all the things that I feel, and then He died for me as a as a man, as a holy man. So me and you can have the chance of salvation. So me and you can believe. Um, I do believe that God could have utilized other ways of, of, of means of salvation, but He chose to to use Jesus. Jesus volunteered Himself. So that's why today we have this hope of, of, of everlasting life. And the devil does not want that. He's jealous of us, me and you. He wants us to go to hell. He wants us to burn. But um, when you see all those things in the world, diseases, sickness, death, separation, something, somebody that you love, might be here today and not here tomorrow. And that's why I'm t I was telling her, you know what I mean? If you love someone, if you truly love someone, you better love me today. Love that person today. Give me flowers today. Tell me I'm wonderful today. Tell me I'm a good man today. Tell her she's beautiful today. Tell her she's a wonderful wife today. A wonderful girlfriend. You know, kiss her on the cheek, kiss her on the lips. Um, you know, put your arm around her neck. All those wonderful things. Just right now, this moment, today. Tell her you appreciate that she cooked uh, breakfast this morning. Tell her thank you for cook uh, dinner in the afternoon. Tell him the same thing like likewise. You know, I, I appreciate you, baby, for cooking dinner, for cooking breakfast. You know, I appreciate that you clean the house. I appreciate that you wash the kids. You know what I mean? I appreciate that you take the kids to school this morning. Thank you. You know, the small things. Because tomorrow might be too late to tell me thank you. Um, uh, when I die, if you go on my graveside with flowers, with um, perfume uh, coming spread over, over my graveside, you're just wasting your time because uh, at that moment I cannot feel your love anymore. I cannot feel your perfume. I cannot smell them. But you know, today I can feel it. I can see the love. And, and that this is the moment that you have to show me love. And, um, and I was also telling her that um, this virus that you see today, it's not going to be the last one. It's going to be even... There gonna be even more worse virus that are gonna come in, in the future. So that's why we need to we need to stay focused. We need to focus on the word of God. We need to stay on our knees. We need to make God the priority in our life. We need to stay in prayers. We need to follow God. It's not that um it's it's not when there's a tragedy um to, for all of us to flood the church. And I was telling her, I remember when I was in college, a freshman in college in, in 2001, when there were, was 9-11. And uh, the next Sunday, the church was filled of people. And then uh, and after a few weeks, and then it was that it was mostly the older folks uh, that were in church and the most religious people that were in church. And then the flock, in, the, the flock of people that were in church at, that Sunday after 9-11, and you never see them again. And you, might see, you, might, you might have seen them the next Easter or the next Christmas. And the, 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 that's how church attendance is mostly here in the United States. And, um, and I was telling her, don't make God a God of tragedy. Don't make God a God that you, we serve, that you serve in the moment, in the hard time, when there's something, when something happening, when something not going right. It's not uh, that time that you have to tell a God, oh, I need you, I need you, I need you, I want God in my life. You know, there's nothing wrong with that to embrace God when there's something wrong with your life. And nothing wrong with that. God is not going to reject you for that. But, you know, we have to make God the God of our daily lives. The God that we, we serve, the God that we praise, the God that we embrace each and every day. In the morning when you wake up, you know, you thank, you thank him. And in, in, in the night before you go to bed, you know, uh, tell him the night, is, the night is in your hand. You know, my life is in your hand. You know, I'm going to sleep. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to know what's going, what's going to, ha what's, what's going to happen with, to me while I'm sleeping. I don't know nothing. I'm clueless. I'm just sleeping. I pass out until I wake up, until you wake me up again. Because I don't wake myself up. The alarm clock that you set, you set up for... Six o'clock, whatever time you go to work in the morning or in the afternoon, that clock does not wake you up. God wake you up, and you you hear that alarm, that alarm clock, and and then you get up, 
and you take shower you wash it you wash yourself however you do it you brush your teeth and then you get up you get out on your on your on your daily lives and um remember god is still in control in that situation god does not look control does the god does not look control no matter how how you see the world is the world can be upside down the world can be chaotic uh, you can have so many incompetent leaders are leading your country, leading your nation, leading your city. Um, you can see so many di division. People don't like each other. People can be on each other's tour. It uh, does not mean that God lose control. God's still in control. He's still in control and he will never lose control. And, and the final victory, the final victory, the final bullet, the final uh, score, that God be on the scoreboard is gonna be come from Jesus Christ Himself because the devil cannot win that battle. He already lost. Like I told you already, he's on a one-way ticket to hell. He cannot purchase a, a, a return ticket because he knows that. He knows it. He knows he's he lost forever. That's why he's trying every single strategy in this world, from sickness to hatred to racism to what ever negative things he can use he will use it uh, to spread division to put separation to put sadness he will use it so that's why the battle is not a physical battle it's not a battle where we can fight fist fight kicking taekwondo karate no it's a battle of the mind it's a spiritual battle this battle we need to fight that battle with, with the holy spirit that um that is a god representative on this earth on our knees with the bible the word of god this is this is our weapon that's how we fight that battle on our knees with common sense and with god first in every situation um remember god's still in control and i'm gonna leave this verse with you which is it, it is on uh, psalm 46 verse 1 to 3 that talk uh, that says that God is our refuge and strength, a very help in trouble. God is still in control in time of trouble. He's in control. He did never lose control. He will never lose control. He loves you. He loves me. He's on the throne. He's pleading for me, for you, for our salvation. Today, he's, he's, he's willing to save you, to save me. He's waiting for you to say, I do. I appreciate you, God. I, I want to make you the Lord of my life. Today is the day while you're breathing, while you can feel the, your nostril breathing in and out, while you can see me, while you can hear me, is the day. But the day that you stop breathing, the day that you, your heart stop, it's too late if you haven't done so, if you haven't made him like the, Lord, the Lord of your life. Today is the opportun uh, opportunity to make him so. And um, I want to give you the opportunity today to make the, Jesus Christ the Lord of your life because tomorrow there's no promise and tomorrow is not going to be better. And when it comes to the coronavirus, believe in, believe in God. There will be a solution. There will be a vaccine. There will be therapeutic, therapeutic drugs. There will be so many of them um, that's going to come in the market. And like I was telling her this morning, I was like, there, there'll be a drug at the end of this month or beginning of next month. There'll be a drug. I was like, she was worrying that um, that she like, she wasn't going to see me. Um, and I was thinking about the same thing. I was like, well, but I, I do believe that something's going to come. There's going to be a drug. But uh, in, in, in the meantime, we need to use common sense. We need to listen to the... Um, to the expert, Dr. Fauci himself, he's an expert of that situation. We need to listen to him. Not Donald Trump, because Donald Trump does not know what he's talking about. He's, he's spreading more division, he's spreading more fear. But Dr. Fauci knows, he's a doctor that uh, specializes in, that, in those type of situation. He understands those things. He knows, and there's, there's, there's the number one specialist that I'm talking about right now. I have this specialist in my life. And I myself is a specialist because he told me, Jesus told us, if we believe in him, if we follow him, we'll be like him. There's nothing that he can do that we cannot do. I, me and you, we can raise the dead. We can heal the sick. We can pray for them. They can recover in Jesus' name. Until next time, remember, Jesus is in, on the throne. He's in control. And he loves you. He loves me. And I myself, I do love you. That's why I'll... I'll 
I'm making those videos um, so I can uh, give you hope of Jesus Christ that I have in myself. Stay blessed, stay focused, wash your hands, practicing social distancing, and um, don't, don't let fear overwhelm you because the battle is the Lord and he's, he's on the winning side. We are on the winning side. We are on Jesus Christ's side. All right, have a good day. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.